It was pretty tough growing up in Richmond because of the, uh, a lot of criminal activity. We didn't have much when we were growing up. We didn't even watch TV. My dad was a boxer. I remember when about being six or seven, my dad used to get me up at five o'clock in the morning. I'd go training with him. First started of fighting, you know, a lot of family made like just laughed at me. They all thought it was a big joke. I went and I won that Australian title, you know. I was very proud of doing that. I got into uh, Kung Fu when I was 12 because I loved uh, the whole Bruce Lee sort of thing. I didn't have much discipline. I, uh, I looked up to my, my Sifu who taught, you know, discipline, routine. He was um, a big role model in my life, almost like a father figure as well. My auntie was a strong role model for me growing up, you know, she was a very straight to the point person, you know, just someone that didn't, wasn't afraid to give their opinion. And that's probably one of the things, you know, I took away from her, you know, and always speak your mind. Yeah, losing her, you know, I know it's like losing another mother for me. I'll hear her voice in my head telling me she's proud. I am the person I am now definitely because of my dad and his um, work ethic when I was a child. You train hard and you'll reap the rewards, you know, by failing to prepare, you prepare to fail. I'm the second, if not the first, uh, Indigenous World Kickboxing Champion. <laughs> I reached the uh, master's level by age of 19. Uh, I was the youngest to achieve master's level from my school. Fought numerous times in the cage and um, on to kickboxing. When I won that world title, my dad couldn't stop calling me the world champion. He actually wouldn't call me by name, he would just call me the champ. I was a very big girl, so I weighed over 100 kilos, so it was a bit uh, difficult. Um, I got teased a lot in school, so you know, Big. You can't run, you can't do this, you can't do that. You're also that islander. Now I think bigger is stronger. If I didn't end up in a boxing gym, I think I just would have been an alcoholic. I think I would have ended up, you know, in trouble with the law. I think yeah, I'd probably be somewhere drunk now. Boxing was a huge like eye opener for me, like being able to train and. Um, punch a bag and take all my anger out on my dad and my dad used to let me spar with him and if I had a bad day at school or something I'd you know take it out on him. Usually people if they were going to be up in your face you know you'd feel intimidated so you have to be up in their face but it made you a lot more calmer and collected. You know, people have different ways of escaping things they got drugs, alcohol, um, music, dancing and this is mine you know I fight yeah, it's just my, my release, I guess, my way of venting. Because in boxing, uh, confidence is everything. If you don't believe in yourself 100%, you know, you're already lo you've already lost before you get in the ring. You love winning, and it gives you this like burst of confidence that you never thought you had. I mean, you walk around with your head held high. If I was boxing when I was younger, I definitely don't think I would have let the kids at school get to me as much as they did. When you win, you know, that's a great feeling there and, and that training gets you there so you know you've done your step by step, you know you've done the routine to get you to where you got to go and yeah that's a, a great sense of uh, achievement. You see your favourite boxers you know, fighting for world titles and you, know, you hope to do it one day yourself. Other Indigenous champions, Robbie Peden, Anthony Mundane, you know, Lionel Rose, you know if you could go and do what they've done they'll be the best. Be the best. <laughs> a rut that I was in where I was getting picked on and bullied and I think that's a big part of um, where I am now today um, is helping other people achieve their goals. I'm helping people, I'm, I'm starting my own gym. Uh, people look up to me as, as a, a role model, you know, especially the young generation, uh, the Aboriginal community. At the moment I run a lot of programs for um, kids at school. Just start, uh, started Fight Girl Fitness. And I have a group of 15 kids, all different nationalities and all different sizes, that come twice a week for $7 a session and we just smash it out. Right, 
don't be a follower. You know, if you know you got something you want to do and something you want to be, you need to go away from the crowd and just chase that dream, chase that goal. You know, even if that means separating yourself from from family, friends. You know, it's, it's worth it in the end. You want to follow the crowd and go do what they do, or you want to, you know, be a world champion boxer and do what a world champion boxer does. Live life to the fullest. Whatever you do. Uh, do it with all your heart and do it to, to the best of your ability. The Olympics are my main goal. You go to the Olympics to get a gold medal. So that's what my dad always told me. And that's what I want to that's what I want to do. We've got another world title coming up in June. Hopefully we'll be a two-time world champion. You know, I want to be a fighter, I want to fight the best fighters in the world one day, I hope. But um, you know, I'm gonna start start here in Australia. You know, I'm gonna fight, try and fight the best here, and then hopefully get on the world stage and fight for a world title one day. It's not just the guy sport. Girls are just as dedicated and hardworking as guys. And like Johnny and my dad says that I punch harder than a guy. And well, if I do, then they better step their game up. Mm -hmm.